We are about two weeks away from UFC Fight Night London and today I'm in the South London suburbs and I'm getting ready to meet up with Nathaniel Wood. I've been commentating on Nathaniel's fights for a little while now. I did a little bit of training with him, but I've never spent the full day with him. So this time we're going to go visit him at his place. We're going to take the dog for a walk. We're going to go training and we're going to see how the man functions. Let's go. So this, I guess, is part of your day with, this is it, with Ivor. This gets the steps in <laughs> every morning. You don't have to worry yeah. about getting steps in, surely. Well, no, but every little helps, right? So... I take him for about 45 minutes in the morning, in this weather, you know, when it's winter, I'll do a little bit less. But, mate, it's lovely, man, I come here every day. And if anything, it's like a meditation, if you like. Yeah. You know what I mean? You just walk around the park, just me and him. So I've got to ask um, the question. Yeah. Why do you need a dog like, I mean, he's a be beautiful animal, by the way. Oh my God, that poor pigeon. <laughs> uh, matches my personality. <laughs> and yeah, mate, I kind of thought, right, a protection dog to, you know, look after the missus and the kids when I eventually have them. Oh, we're unraveling the plan already. That's it, that's it, that's the plan. Pick up some bonuses, get married. Which is around well, the corner? Which is around the corner, that's a month after the fight. Is it? Okay. Um, does that so mean was, that head was, movement's got to be on point then for yeah, the photos? Yeah, and my sister's getting married two days after the fight. So Are you joking? Nah, she said to me, look, don't be getting black eyes for my wedding. Oh. <laughs> um, it's refreshing. At bantamweight, mate, I'm obsessed every day, every two seconds about, you know, cutting weight, making sure I'm going to hit the scales. And now I'm like, three weeks out, I'm chilling in Ibiza, getting some sun to my body. You know, it, 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 mate, I think that's perfect. Yeah, so going in that whole... 135 to 145 in percentage terms. But like how big a difference was that for you in terms of feel? Mate, honestly, I didn't feel like the last two I was even going for a fight until 10 minutes before. Really? There was no hard weight. For me, every fight, like I love to fight, right? This is why I do it. So a lot of fighters maybe get a lot of nerves. You know, I don't, this for me is uh, excitement. This is what I love to do. Otherwise I wouldn't have started doing it. For me, Going to bantamweight was the, the work. You know, that was the hard part. Um, and that's gone now. You know, the real, I do have to cut weight, of course. You know, I still have to cut a fair amount, which most people would think is crazy, but compared to bantamweight, this is easy. Really? So now all I've got to do is perform and fight, which is what I like to do. So there is no kind of hard part now. Right. It's all fun part. You yeah. Know? And of course the fight, you know, you get nerves about it and, you know, I've got to perform and I've got, I want to win and at the end of the day, I'm doing what I love for a living, you know, so now that I'm not killing myself to make weight, it is, it is just all fun. Um, so for me, easy decision. I wanted to do it years ago, but my coaches, you know, they kind of were like, look, you've got a, a bit of a pathway at the moment at bantamweight. Obviously having a two year layoff, you know, it kind of, everyone moved up and I was still kind of stalemate and just, you know, sort of sitting around, not ranked, and I thought, well, why don't I just go up a weight? Yeah, you know? yeah. And here we are, mate. You know, I've got a smile on my face two and a half weeks out <laughs> from the fight. Normally I wouldn't. Um, I think for my missus, you know, she was like, yeah, this is the best decision you've ever made. Oh, yeah. I was That's... a miserable little man back in the day. Um, yeah, I've, so, yeah, I've always, uh, it gets very personal, but Out. I kind of, I've always thought about talking to the, the nearest and dearest, because it's such a, just to help fans understand the toll that it takes, not just on you guys, yeah. those, the man in the arena, if you like, yeah. but you need such a, such a close support system around you to allow this to work. And it is so hard for people to understand what you guys go through, particularly with the training load and then that weight. So yeah. like, Give it, give us a sense of, uh, w without getting too personal, like how much better has it made life in, in the Wood household? <laughs> Mate, honestly, a huge amount of difference. Then it's um, just such a no brainer, isn't it? Because it's, again, I uh, go back to these weight cuts, you know, you're putting your life on hold for a good, let's say six weeks of that camp where it's, you know, I can't eat dinner with my missus. You know, she doesn't want to eat dinner what I'm eating. A right. very small portion, you know, very low calories, very bland, boring dinners. You know, she wants to eat something a little bit better. You know, she might want to go out for dinner and unfortunately, you know, other than one meal, meal a week, you know, I can't do that. Um, God, he's just, strong, isn't he? Jesus oh, mate, yeah, yeah, you <laughs> I'm not getting that. You have to just hope they let's go. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you kind of just have to put your life on hold and, you know, luck, 
But I'm very fortunate that my family are very supportive. You know, my dad's my coach. My mum's very supportive in, in obviously my MMA career. Um, my fiance, you know, she's she met me when I was an athlete. So um, yeah, I'm very fortunate. Um, but you do have to kind of put a lot of things on hold. You know, holidays. You know, things like that. Even our honeymoon now, I'm like, you know, maybe we'll get another fight in, then go on the honeymoon and. That's why I'm eyeing up the Abu Dhabi Brazil card because if I can try and make a honeymoon into a bit of a fight trip at the same time, then that pays for it, you know? Right. It's just constant, mate. You know, a lot of people, when you go and work a nine to five, I guess you work nine to five, you come home and it's done. Yeah. With us, okay, we might not be putting as many necessary hours in, but it's 24 seven. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're always on the go. You're always thinking about fighting. We don't have set dates, you know, where the UFC say, right, next year we're going to fight this date, that date, and whatever other date you want. It's right. kind of, you know, sit by the phone. Yeah. You can't necessarily plan your life um, like you would with a normal job. But that's the sport, you know, there's yeah. swings and roundabouts, right? A lot of people probably look at me and think, you know, you, you don't work, you just go training every day. You know? <laughs> but, yeah, that's the, the life we choose, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out! Ah. Ivar! He knows we're going home. Come here! <laughs> he's tripped a few people up before. I yeah, bet. There's a guy on a oh. push bike and he's riding. He's doing, probably doing about 20, my missus said, and he ran in front of him, come off really? the bike. Yeah, he was alright, luckily. Was but he alright? He was alright, yeah, he did. I was going to say, don't worry about the say, he'll be alright. What about yeah. the boy? So I'm looking at you now. You are covered in slobber, dog hair. And the one thing that made me laugh about what your dad said is he never thought you'd be into grappling and mixed martial arts. He said he's so clean yeah. and he doesn't like, he said, I never thought he'd be really into the whole someone sweating on him and like kind of the closeness yeah. of wrestling, things of that nature. Now I'm looking at you now, it's you look changed. like you're, changed, <laughs> you're much more comfortable with that. It's weird because I'm like, if someone else's sweat went on me, on like a day out, let's say I was at the park, just hanging out, someone's sweat, I'd, oh, you know, I'd, I'd need to be like, right, I need to go wash. Really? At the gym, it's different. <laughs> at the gym, it's different, you know. As soon as training's finished, oh, I'm straight in the shower. You know, I'm not risking staff infection no, or anything no, no, like that. No. But that's With normal. Swabber, that's yeah. my dog, that's my boy. Yeah. If you're someone else's, oh, gross. You know, I'm, I'm very <laughs> like a, like, a, not when it comes to tidying the flat, but I'm a clean freak when it comes to, you know, um, other people sweat on me and stuff but in the gym it's different it's like work mode right i guess it's like maybe a mechanic when he's at work covered in grease and shit all day yeah but i guess he doesn't want to have that on him maybe on a weekend if yeah. he's out nice yeah, clothes. yeah 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 um but yeah because he's my dog i don't mind but he gets away with it maybe it's come with age you know, yeah I've grown up a little bit but when i think i started when i was 15 i can't even really remember but my my dad said you know he never thought that i'd dare go and grapple with another man because I was a bit like, uh, you know, can't, got to wash your hands all the time. <laughs> but I'm used to it. COVID now, was so. perfect for you then. You're like, oh, oh I'm mate, in my element. Don't, yeah. Even when COVID <laughs> come out this year, I wasn't ever really worried about it. Whereas, you know, when I was a kid, bloody hell, you know, I was everything, you know, germs, bacteria. And, really? Yeah. But Isn't I guess it's weird? like, maybe my OCD, it changes. Whereas now, yeah. I have big OCD on cancers, you know, anything is like, oh, cancer, cancer, and... Oh, my. Yeah. It's, well, that's it's heavy. A, it's a dark thing, mate, yeah. Any, any sort of little pains I get, I get an obsession, and, a, and, and that's kind of like one of my phobias is cancer. It's just funny how life changes and your phobias change and your, your fears, you know? Yeah. Um, I have more fears of him dying. I'm like, fuck, you know, if my dog dies, what am I going to do? Yeah. Um, so he's a protection dog, but if there was ever trouble, I'm protecting him. You know? Yeah, so, of course. So yeah, yeah, that's that's heavy, man. It's dark, yeah. Man. yeah it's just, uh, but that's why, like now, I'm, I'm on medication and stuff for my OCDs. And um, is that right? Yeah, you yeah. have to take stuff for it. Yeah, yeah, man. I've been on it for about six years now. And has it helped? <sighs> Don't know. So I've been on and off, and there's one time I come off last year, and that was my worst time ever. At, but I think I had come off the tablets for around three months. I never knew this, by the way. Fine. I didn't know yeah, this no, was like it. I was absolutely fine, and then. Boom, you know, I had a, uh, I think it was about three weeks. It was the start of the Charles Rosa camp, actually, and I was, mate, in a bad state. Went back on the tablets, and now I'm like, you know what, I'm just staying on them, I'm not coming off them. So um, what's the challenge if you if you didn't have the medication? or, or So what led you to taking medication? What are the challenges of life? Just the doctor life? said, look, 
take take them cause because what what was happening? So I, I suffer with OCD and anxiety. Okay, that's what they've kind of um, diagnosed me with. Right. And now a lot of things when I was a kid make sense with OCD. I'm like, right. okay, I, I can tell that that was OCD. When I was a kid, I had obsession about hell. So not even that I was super religious, but anything I did, I had to ask my mum, I'm not going to go to hell for this. I mean, I was probably seven years old, but I'm obsessed about hell. That's not what a seven year old should be worrying about. So this is more of a thought. Yeah, yeah. So, more, rather than a, not like the light switch has to go no, off no, no, before you. No, no, it's not physical. It's all obsessions in my head. Right. So like, let's say I go back to the cancer thing, right? Let's say I have a little bit of a headache and someone goes, of course, get checked, mate. You know, hope it's not cancer. I will not let that thought go. So I would obsess about it all day. So it's obsessive compulsive disorder, right? right? So I would, you might be able to go, okay, right, I'm just gonna do something and keep busy, but I'll be thinking about that all day until the point where I can't think about anything else. It's just in my head. And then what that'll do is cause a great deal of anxiety. Right. Which is necessary, if, if you said it to me, I'd be like, mate, don't be ridiculous. It could be a million and one other things. Yeah. But when it's in your own head, it kind of convinces your, let's say your nervous system to think it's real. Right, so and it all was of manifesting. A sudden, then my anxiety is kicking in. And then I'm like, no, I'm not, I know I'm being ridiculous, but I can't help that feeling of now I'm anxious as fuck. Mm. Um, and then don't be wrong, next day I might be like, ah, what was I worrying about? You know, mm. it's very up and down. But when that kind of OCD has latched onto something, man, it's hard to get, get rid of it. And I noticed that the more time I chill is the more time it, it will heighten heighten, because mm. I'm never busy. Because if I had right. a nine to five, you're occupied. You know, if you've yeah. got to do stuff from the moment you leave at eight till 6 p.m. by the time you get in and then you get home, you switch off. Yeah. Because with me, other than a two hour session in the morning and an hour and a half in the evening, yeah. I've got a lot of hours in the day where I can think of things. Right. So now the idea is I keep busy. You know, I have my dog, I read, I, I do a clothing brand, I'll nap. Because I don't, in a way, I'm kind of running away because I don't want to end up yeah, back in that yeah, sort of yeah. state. Whereas some people, you know, they just want to chill out and relax. I can't because otherwise I kind of let my thoughts go away with me. Mm. Um, but don't get me wrong, I've learned how to kind of deal with it now. So the other day I actually put my Instagram, I, was, I woke up and I was just, I don't even know why I was worried. It was that feeling of like nerves, worry, and I don't know why. I was just like, fuck, I feel shit today. Mm. So I went to, to wrestling, the gym, and uh, forgot my gum shield. So now I'm like, oh, fuck. you know, head, quickly head back home realized the gum shield was in my bag. So now I'm getting really angry and right. now I'm going to be 15 minutes late to the session. And I just worked myself up. Mate, I had to get my bag in the gym. Brad, like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, mate, I'll ring you later. A bit of drama. That's what I just said to him. I said, there's a bit of drama going on. And because uh, I didn't want to say to him. Got in the car, mate, rang my missus, pulled my eyes out, had 10 minutes, just tears. Got home, done half a marathon, come back, felt better. So my thing was, you know, Talk to someone straight away. I thought, I'll ring my missus. I'm not bottling yeah. this up. I've rang her and she's like, Look, you're being ridiculous. Don't stress. You know, it's your anxiety. Had a little kind of tear to myself. And I thought, Right, I'm not going to just sit indoors all day. Come here, either. I'm not going to just sit indoors all day and kind of dwell on it. Go for a run, half a marathon. 80s music in my head, you know, just chilled, mm. kind of changed the vibe a little bit. Yeah. The sun was shining. Got back home and I felt much better for it. Whereas yeah. things like that, I would have never known back in the day. I would have gone home and thought, I feel awful, I'm just gonna stay in bed. Right, sit and with them. And then it. in bed, I'm gonna sit with them thoughts for right. two, three hours, I feel anxious. And then I'm gonna go over things and then every little thing is gonna, in my head, go. Right. And uh, it's hard, mate. You know, I've gone therapy for it as well. And when you kind of talk to people about it, you realize it's ridiculous. You know, and I'm, I'm kind of like the best person to give people advice, but when it's in your own head, it is very hard. Yeah. And you're kind of trapped, man, it is mm. it's shit, but. Well, I'm you sorry know, you go through that. On the plus side though, from dealing with that, that's what's made me kind of, you know, it was the John Dodson fight I lost and someone said to me, are you down in the dumps? And I said, mate, I don't give a shit. They're like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, of course I'm gutted I lost, but I'm still alive. I haven't got my fears, cancer, things like that, whereas a lot of other people have, you know, my fiance's here, my mum and dad are here. I just got paid at the time, I don't know, 20 grand to fight. Mm. What have I got to be stressed about? Yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas, because when I'm in an, like now, I'm just grateful for having a, a good functioning brain. Yeah. You know, for a brain that's in a, in a positive light, is amazing. You know, yeah. people take things like that for granted. Um, having your health, do you know what I mean? Mm. So even if I've got minus two grand in the bank, as long as I'm alive, I'm walking, yeah. my mental health's a good place. My dog's there, he's not dying. Yeah. He's good, you know? <laughs> You'll see me do this as well, that's me touching wood. Um, yeah, I'm in a good place, you know? So. The day where 
I can't fight anymore will be the day that I'm like, oh, I'm gutted, you know. But now I get to fight for a living. It's yeah. A great, great thing, you know. Why have I got to be worried about losing? And it's mad because our sport is, there are so many variables that I reckon you can get hung up on. Like for me, like I, I still, I'm still a practicing martial artist mm -hmm. and I, I, get, I get really triggered by a training session or yeah. if I, when I used to compete, I, it would eat, chew me up. Yeah, yeah. To a point where I can, I can, I can empathize a little bit yeah. of what you're going, but so I'm, now I'm projecting but I would have thought that your line of work, because so many things can, can happen, can go wrong, yeah. can go right, but also it's very challenging for the mind. It is. Because you have to simplify these things. My yes. coach would always just say, don't overthink it. Yeah. I would be looking at all Easy the- said and done, right? Yeah. But I guess that it doesn't sound like that side of the business really affects you. <laughs> no, not anymore. And that's the positive from having, I think, anxiety, depression, whatever you want to call it. Because when I've been, really down and in a dark, dumb, you know, horrible days. Now this is like, okay, I lost my fight. Of course I'm gonna be gutted. Yeah, yeah. Of course yeah. I'm gonna be like, oh, you know, that's annoying. <clears throat> but I'm like, I then look at the positives and I'm like, okay, well, there's kids dying with cancer. Mm. You know, when I lost my dog, that was the worst pain I've ever dealt with in my life. Mm. Losing a fight, it's not that hard. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Of course, if the UFC said, right, you lost your fight, we're cutting you you're not ever going to earn any money from fighting again. And then I'd start to think, oh, for fuck's sake. But then I'd think, oh, yeah. I'm still alive. Still have my eyes, my hearing, my, yeah. you know. And I'd just try and look at the positives now. So what is this, what is the area that we're so in? So this area now is Worcester Park. Might come under as Cheen. Um, so we're five minutes, basically, from Malden, where I grew up. And we're ten minutes from the gym now. Okay. So, so give us an idea. Local especially our friends over stateside, like what, what's this area of London like? Uh, mate, if I'm honest, I think this area is lovely. Um, a lot of other people might disagree, you know, it's not. South London gets a reputation, yeah, but this feels not, like a different vibe. We're kind vibe. of here, I'd say, is on the, like, the outskirts. You know, right. this is like a little bit out of the kind of real hectic stuff. I like how you're on brand with the dog as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mate, I'm gonna be there. I'm that cheesy dog dad, ain't I? The dog dad, I like it. Dog on my t-shirt, just to let everyone know. But yeah, second outfit for the day. I'll probably go for <laughs> three outfits. <laughs> you boys having coffee? Yeah, I'll take a coffee. Oh. Yeah, so Andre Feely. Um, I mean, what were your first thoughts when you got offered him? Mate, I was like, yes, straight away, because this was a fight I actually wanted for a while. Um, I've always, been a bit of a fan of Andre Feely. You know, I've always watched him, thought he's a very good fighter. I like his personality. I like how he is outside of uh, fighting. And I think it's a good stylistic matchup for me. You know, he's um, an entertaining fighter. He's an exciting fighter. He comes to bang, you know, he's, um, he's game. He's talented. And I think it's a good, even though I'm actually ranked higher than him, it's a good, I think, scalp. You know, he's been in there with Max Holloway. You know, he's been in there with some of the best in the world. Yes, he may have not won against them, but you know, he's been in there with them. Mm. So he's been there, he's been, he's got a t-shirt. I think going in there, you know, he's, he's got a big following, you know, get eyes on me. Um, so yeah, I like the matchup. I actually wouldn't have minded calling him out a bit before, but after his last fight, he had a bit of a, um, you know, uh, emotional post-fight speech. You know, it was very sad, obviously, to hear about his, uh, I think it was his wife had a miscarriage or, or something. And I thought, you know, now's not the time to call someone out. Do you right. know what I mean? Even though I wasn't going to do it in a douche way. I was just sure, kind of, sure, you know, sure. Do you fancy oh, that's a, mindful. Do you, wanna, yeah. do you want to have a little scrap? But I thought, no, nah, you know, leave, leave the guy alone. And uh, yeah, been offered it. He's on a win. So, you know, it's, I think it's a perfect matchup for me. He obviously beat Charles Jourdain. Yeah. Um, I beat Charles Jourdain. So, yeah, I think it's a good, exciting fight. And in London, my hometown. So, you know, I couldn't have asked it to be in a better place. There's, for the first time, I think I've seen you with a little, with a little beef as well, uh, with Lerone Murphy. Yeah. So I thought that the UFC <laughs> might make this fight because it was obviously you were due to go down and, yeah. like, but I, I didn't see, I didn't see it coming that you guys would have any kind of issue. Does, do those issues still exist? And is this a fight that is going to get done down uh, the line? It's so if I'm honest, mate, a lot of it at the start, I think was like just, from my end anyway, it was a bit of kind of like banter, you know, a bit of back and forth, like having a little dig, he'll have a little dig at me, whatever. And 
he made things a bit personal. You know, he got, I think, well upset with things that I said. Like on my Twitter, all I put was, gutted, I can't fight. You know, I was down in the dumps. I'm on Twitter, I'm putting that, oh, I'm gutted, you know, I'm missing out on this fight. I was ready to put on a masterclass. He took that to offense, you know? I didn't tag it in it. I didn't say, I, like, hey, Laurent, I was gonna put on a masterclass. But yeah, I'm, I'm bigging myself up. I was in the best shape of my life. I was ready to put on a masterclass. He got funny about it, you know, tweeted me and actually added me. Um, and then it was on fight week. Uh, thought, well, I'll leave him alone because he actually had a bit of back and forth. And I even said to him in his DMs, like, mate, honestly, I wish you all the best. Like, good luck with the fight. And I think it was um, Blake Harrison said, Nathaniel wants to get the fight rebooked like you would if you had to pull out of a fight. And uh, he started saying, where the fuck's Nathaniel now? Where the fuck's Nathaniel now? Like, looking under the table, like, as, as if to say I was... I was scared or I was hiding. So I took that a bit personal, you know, because I was like, you know, we kind of agreed the other day, like, look, you know, wish you all the best, we'll get the fight on in the future. And he was kind of like, to me, basically saying I was scared, like I was running, you know, where is he now, where is he now? Well, you know where I am, I've got 14 stitches in my leg at home, you know, sitting on the sidelines, guide. Um, so it kind of just escalated from there, but if I'm honest, John, I'm, I'm over it, mate. I'm, you know, the way I see it is, I've got a better fight. I'm further up the card. Um, I don't need Lerone. You know, I wanted to get the fight rebooked because I was the one that pulled out. And, you know, I don't ever want to have to pull out of a fight. If it was Lerone that pulled out, ah, cool. I don't care. You know, you pulled out. But I pulled out. I wanted to get it rebooked. You know, I feel like he didn't want to get it rebooked. He's saying that he will fight me in this. But, you know, on, on the post-fight week, all he was saying was that he wanted a top 15 guy and that... You know, I was a nobody and just that kind of talk. Um, so yeah, as far as I'm concerned, he's irrelevant to my career. You know, I, I wish him all the best. You know, good luck with his fight with Josh. And uh, yeah, if it's a fight that gets made in the future, so be it. But as far as I'm concerned, I get Andre Feely, beat him. I would like to think that I'm ranked, especially if I beat him in good fashion. And then, you know, I'm on my way up. So. Uh, yeah, I feel like he thinks I need him, but like, mate, I got double the Instagram followers than you. I'm like, you know, you're not, you're not a draw. You know, there's no. If I wanted to get a bigger name, just like Andre Fee, Andre Fee is a much bigger name than he is. So um, for me, yeah, it's not a fight that I'm desperate for. If it happens, great, but I'm done with asking for it because I was asking for it. We sent my man. We said to Sean Shelby, look, can we get the the Lerone Murphy fight rebooked? It didn't happen, so uh, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, I'm on to bet things now. Now we are here, mate. State now we're here. Facility, I think it's 12,000 square foot. So we're now down inside the walls of GB Top Team. Nathaniel is getting ready for a boxing class, so we're going to see him do a little bit of work. We've actually got his dad, Gary, who is going to be hanging cage side as well, so probably get a little conversation with him. One punch, Brad Pickett has just wrapped up the sparring sessions. So it's hot as hell in here. There's a little atmosphere because it's a sparring day, but Nathaniel's just going to be doing the pads today. He's just come back off the stack. Uh, that's too nice. Fend the kick. Check the kick. Uh, that's nice. Two more. Yeah. Hi, Gary. 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 It's lovely to watch him work in the pads actually. Really, really good pads as well. He's, uh, go around to a lot of gyms and might not uh, have the most accomplished pad holders, but those guys work really well together. If I, if I had my way, I would be uh, rich enough not to ever have Nathan fight again. <laughs> so, um, the, the toll, is, I reckon he's taken most of 20 years off me, not him himself, but the anxiety that I feel when it comes to the fight, when Nathan lost, losses have come through, um, he deals with them. They're pretty heavy for the first few hours. The pizza normally changes that. Um, and then he bounces back really quickly. But I'm sitting there constantly going over it to see if I could have done anything better. And those last two performances, I've got to say, but what you guys have done and the performances that he's put in, he's looked phenomenal at oh, featherweight. Awesome. And there, were, there were some questions from the outside. Yeah. Like, is, is he a small guy coming up? You know, how's that power going to carry? Is he going to have the speed advantage? But he's looked so relaxed with, with the whole process. Uh, and that would be one of the things that crosses my mind. Uh, Nathan, at the moment, um, he's a changed fighter than he was five years ago. Mm. Uh, he's much more free. Um, he's 
very, still very powerful. For, to me, I don't quite know where genetically he's got his power from, but he can definitely generate it. Um, and all I've said to him is that he's going to be giving away size. Right. Because if you see him now, you'll see that he's, he, for um, a bantamweight, he's got very long arms. Right. But now you've moved up to featherweight, you're going to give away that little reach. Right. So, yeah. Before I let you concentrate on this, Andre Feely. Big name. You know, a real veteran. Yeah. Uh, Do you like the fight? Uh, I like any fight. Okay. Like, uh, um, anybody that they throw, that throw Nathan. I mean, if they was to ring up and say, you can, you can have the, the title holder, I would question to you know, but the truth is anybody that comes in. For me, like, it, it's no secret, he, he, he has a lot of anxiety and stuff like that. And I think when he was cutting too much weight and dieting and stuff like that, he, he, his mind would go elsewhere, you know. Now he's a little bit more happy, you know. It's one of the likes, you know, a happy life, you know, like, he's, he's going to be a good fighter. So he's a lot more happy. Kids these days, look, I'm going to have to do it in one. <laughs> when you don't have the flick of the wrist, it's all about technique. What? Yeah, I think you it's, it's this. Took a little bit of time. Hey, Sim, it. Sim, you're a push yeah, one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he's always, in, I've always said this, he's always improving. He's one of those guys that continually gets better. Uh, and also, I think now the biggest switch for me is his mental state is a lot more stable. Right. Uh, now moving up a weight class and not having that extra headache of cutting weight, the stress that brought him and stuff like that. And right. so obviously, you know, we all know that he, he does suffer a little bit of anxiety and stuff like that. It's publicly known now. So, but it's like one of those ones where, it, for me, fighting's ninety percent, you know, mental, and it's, it's very important to have a a fight of a good mental state going into a fight and also not just a fight into the training camp because mm. like people don't realise like, okay the fight's the fight right and you got to have a great mindset for the fight but you have to have the mindset for the training otherwise you're not going to get ready for that fight you know so gotcha. like so it's important to have him uh, you know, happy yeah. uh, and I think uh, Andre Philly is one of those I think it's a good matchup in a way where he's not, I won't say he's like good in any area but bad in any way he's a solid what I call like a a veteran. This, he is a veteran. This yeah. is why, and for me, it's one of those ones where it's not that hard to get into the UFC nowadays. It's hard to stay there. And he's been there a long time, had a lot of fights, fought the best of the best sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So, like, for me, I think this is a perfect kind of test where to see where where he's at, you know, mm. in, in, in this weight class. I know, I know uh, Charles Jordan is a fantastic striker, and, and the family would dealt with him perfectly. Mm. Uh, but this is this is different. Where I, I I think you know, I think Feely brings a different kind of like. He doesn't care. You know what I mean? He, 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 in a way that like he's gonna press forward, not 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 get you know worried and stuff like that, or, or, or buy anything, and really bring out the best in the final. I think. It's exactly this, right? Yeah. Right, right. So like exactly what I was telling you, right? So next week, apparently on Monday, you're doing a what? Food vlog. A food vlog. <laughs> He'll never be able to do that when he was going. If it was going down to bantamweight, he'd be like, Hey, bantamweight, he, this water he, would he, make me feel guilty. He'd be he'd be crying with me, you know. But now he, now he's doing a food vlog on, on, on Monday. You know? I haven't really asked you too much about your your career so far. So uh, this is like a quick fire round. But what would you say your you say your most notable fight was for so kind of like for any reasons a fight that really stands out as one of significance in your career i would probably say the josh reed fight okay and obviously because it was just such a back and forth fight obviously you know he, he, he was smashing me in the first two minutes and then you know obviously i completely turned it around and then ended up winning um, and obviously with the crowd going as crazy as they <laughs> was that night um, you know, I'd say that's probably my most notable win, most notable win. For the normals like me, who perhaps have never been involved in something like that, but you get cracked. Yeah. Whether you've even felt, had you felt that sensation before in your life? Had you ever been hit that hard before? Yes, but not then had to carry on. So I've been okay. hit hard in training before, but then it's like, right, okay, oh, you're a bit wobbled, let's quit. Okay. You know, give your brain a little break. 
but obviously he wobbled me and then was just rushing me and you know after the first sort of 10 seconds I was with it but it was like he was shaking me you know someone kind of grabbed your jacket and was just shaking you around yeah. that's what it was like you know every time I was kind of trying to get my bearings you know he was just hitting me and a lot of them after the first initial shot weren't doing that much damage yeah they were just throwing me all about you know um and that's what i remember i remembered thinking like it was like someone had grabbed me and was just shaking me like this so um but it's all fun and games you know it's one to it's well, a story to tell in it and do you remember what goes through your head at that point I remember this is, thinking this, this is a significant like what's on the line for this fight so obviously that was a fight where it was like you know you win this and you're probably ufc um and it's a title fight you know if you lose it you lose your belt you lose your shot at the ufc you know you'd have to go back a few steps and work your way back up um but for me it was pride you know we had it was they sold it as the kind of england versus wales um he sold a hell of a lot of tickets i sold a hell of a lot of tickets you know i think it's probably about 25 grand's worth of tickets um, just for that fight. And I remember thinking, oh, I can't go out like this. And <laughs> I was too proud to shoot for a takedown as well. Um, so yeah, I just remember thinking, Mark, please don't stop that fight. I am gonna get, I'm gonna turn this around. And uh, yeah, you know, luckily I did. And I got a few funny stories of my mates telling me how some of the Welsh in the crowd were you know, giving it all the big earn and then literally as I've turned it around their face has just dropped and <laughs> oh dear. it was it was a special one, you know, I think uh, for my friends and family, you know, I think it, it really kind of made them proud because, you know, I'd gone in there and was all, all this hype behind me, you know, there was a little bit of back and forth with the Welsh and the English and next thing, you know, it looks like I'm out, I'm done, but, you know, I pulled it out of the bag and bit down on the gum shield and you know, obviously came out with the win in the first round. Did you always know you had that kind of, uh, that heart? Yeah, 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 I've but always Unless known. it's been tested, you, I guess you don't really know, right? Yeah, so I think a lot of the tests come from training. You know, you can see some guys, they come into the gym and they might be sparring and you can just tell, you know, you're like, you're not necessarily a fighter. You might be really talented. You know, there's a lot of athletes out there. Yeah. But being a fighter, is different from being just being an athlete and I, I believe that I'm the two you know I'm an athlete I'm a fighter and you know from obviously when I started this sport you know I had to work hard in the gym and you know you can tell someone's mindset as soon as you put them on a sprint session you know you put them on a treadmill and see how well they do all of a sudden every excuse is coming out of the sun and <laughs> you know with me I've always worked I've got a lot of excuses I'm good at those <laughs> yeah. so you can kind of see when someone's got that quitting mentality right. uh, mentality if you like um, and for me you know I haven't you know I've had fights where I've been submitted and I've had to tap but that's to live to fight another day you know yeah. I don't want to get my arm broken and then be out for a year with a broken arm and yeah you know sometimes you know when you've lost but you know I think a lot of people beat themselves up in their in their own head and yeah. you know they're saying I will, I will refuse to let another man um, mentally break me let's say right what's been your favorite fights favorite for your favorite performance it's maybe? gotta be the last two of which one i don't know charles jordan or charles rosa really one because the camp was just easy no cutting weight um and i was just i felt like i was playing in there you know i honestly felt like cat, a cat and a mouse maybe you know and i was the cat mm. i was just playing with them in there i honestly feel like i could have got the finish but I just wasn't in a rush. Do you know what I mean? I didn't want to do anything too uh, hasty, especially with um, someone like Charles Jordan who throws, you know, crazy stuff sometimes, spinning kicks. You know, I didn't want to obviously end up walking in on something like that. So I did play it safe. Um, but I do, I, I kind of look back at the fire and just think, man, I could have just finished that if I wanted. But uh, I was having fun. You know, if mm. the ref had said at the end, you know, we're deciding to give you some more more rounds I would have been bang up for it and the crowd was crazy as well you know the London crowd obviously for Charles Rosa was behind me and the Charles Jordan one in Paris they were behind him but man they were making a hell of a lot of noise mm. so you know for me that was a uh, them two would probably be my most enjoyable fights if I was to ask your dad or Brad which one of your performances they most favored what do you think their response would be Ooh. And is it different for your dad, maybe? To yeah, my dad wants me to just get a quick win, right. get a knockout, come out <laughs> uninjured, untouched, you know, just no injuries whatsoever. 
Um, for Brad, I don't know. Brad would probably say something like the Josh Reed fight because he saw my mentality or something like that. But yeah. Yeah, my dad, you know, he just doesn't want me coming out of any injuries. And at the start, I don't think it was, I think it's worse now for him. You know, I think now as he's got older, it's like, you know, I'm his boy. And, you know, who wants to watch their son get in a cage and especially being literally in my corner on the other side of it. Yeah. When you, you don't have any control of what happens in the fight. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I know that feeling because when I've cornered teammates, it's horrible. You know, mm. I hate cornering teammates because you feel very responsible. And really, there's nothing you can do. Mm. Um, you know, even when I'm fighting, I don't really listen too much to my corner unless it's in between rounds. Um, you know, you're kind of too much in the fight and the adrenaline rush and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I, I would hate to be in my dad's position for that one. You know, I, I definitely wouldn't want to watch my son fight and then, you know, be kind of responsible for how, you know, we get warmed up and yeah, things like that. But you know, we've got obviously a lot of memories and yeah, I know, you know, I know deep down he enjoys it, but I think it scares him a bit now. So. Uh, and we are here now at the very first gym that I ever trained at. Brilliant. And have a little Yeah, let's have a little walk around. around. Which is actually a scout hut. It's all the best fighters have started at a scout hut yeah. in the UK. Started from the bottom now, we're here. <laughs> so about 15 years ago, I walked in here for the first session with me old man. And at the time, it still now is a scout hut. This was a, a jiu-jitsu gym, three nights a week for two hours. And it's all locked up now, but we would have gone in, there would have been these cupboards. And I kid you not, the stench that come off that, <laughs> them mats was hideous. We'd have to quickly get all the mats out, connect them. Like yeah, the, the jigsaw piece. ones, yeah. Yeah, obviously because I was the youngest, it was always down to me to mop up and put them away. And that was our gym, mate. So obviously you've seen the gym that we've got now. But and this is where it started. This was it, no showers, one toilet shared between everyone. Just walking from the car down to here, seeing this place though, what kind of memories did it spark? Mate, I remember the very first day, and this is the first time I've ever come here, by the way, since training here. Really? Yeah, How yeah. long ago was that? 15 years ago. Okay, so carry and I on. I remember exactly like it was yesterday, coming up with my dad, I was probably 16, nervous as hell because all of a sudden there's all these jiu-jitsu guys with cauliflower ears and at the time I was an MMA fan there was Jimmy Manoa, Tim Radcliffe. What they were here? Yeah yeah they were here. No way! Yeah yeah they were here um, and my dad's introducing me and I'm just this little kid that they're sort of like yeah you alright mate how you doing you okay and I'm a bit like oh I've got to fight these guys. You know, there was no <laughs> there was no bantam weights in no. them days um, you know these were all monsters and yeah, yeah I thought that was yesterday man it's, it's a cool feeling um, and I remember my dad, I've kind of felt like a baby again where I was like, Dad, don't leave me. You know, I wanted to kind of latch on to him because I was a bit like, a bit out of my depth here. And then as soon as I started rolling, I was like, this is it. You know, this is a bit of me. Yeah, um, and why? I it. What, what was it? I've always loved play fighting. Okay. And I think literally, it's like play fighting. You know, I'm on a mat with guys, there's rules, there's no punching, there's no kicking, it's jujitsu. We're play fighting. Yeah. You know? Um, obviously everyone was bigger than me, so no one was going crazy, killing me. You know, mm. I didn't have any sort of 100 kilo monsters trying to take my head off. You know, everyone was very um, helpful in showing me what to do. And I'd already kind of n known the submissions. My dad already already showed me like arm bars, guillotines and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, this was it. And I'll actually get, I'll get a picture. So if you want, you can put it up on the screen. Yeah, I'd love that. You'll see a little me with a little gum shield. With my, uh, it had teeth teeth uh, like painted on it yeah yeah i remember thinking i was the man you know? <laughs> i remember having a picture and i'm like this in my garage and it was it's awful now i cringe at it but at the time i was thinking yeah i'm definitely want to see that then. chocolate down <laughs> and uh they also did a muay thai class but that wasn't in here that was over at another gym so i would come here tuesday thursday and saturdays jiu-jitsu and then monday wednesday fridays was muay thai and that was my training schedule there wasn't no right. mma class there no. wasn't no wrestling you know I'm, I'm only 30 now but i feel like a veteran in the sport yeah because i'm telling people man back in my day yeah yeah there wasn't any anything like that there wasn't there. an mma gym mma wasn't a big thing you had cage uh, uc mma at the time i think when i started that was like the biggest show in the uk yeah um and then obviously the ufc which was like you know you'll be very lucky if you get to the ufc because mm. now it's a lot more achievable um and yeah, just grafted away. There it is. Yeah. Well, thank you for bringing us down. No, it's actually kind of got my little goosebumps <laughs> got going. Yeah. Down.
what a fascinating look this has been into Nathaniel's journey from the scout huts all the way to the bright lights of the UFC. There have clearly been some struggles, but it really sounds like the Londoner has found his groove as a 145er. And although he has an exciting battle with a true veteran in Andre Feely, 2023 will obviously see even bigger moves in his personal life when he ties the knot later in the summer. Good luck to the future, Mr. and Mrs. Wood. I want to send a big thank you to Nathaniel, Ivor the Dog, Gary Wood, One Punch Picket, GB Top Team, and Jonathan Michael Gomez Alexandra. We all look forward to seeing the results in the O2 Arena.